All right. So problem number four is next. And that's pretty much how much the class is going to run. I'll talk about that tomorrow during our discussion meeting. Again, the same deal. I'm glancing at this problem and I say, okay, what's the equilibrium point? So it seems that y equal negative one half is my equilibrium point. So negative one half, I assume it's right there. I'm going to draw a line. Uh, I don't know where these lines are. There. So this is equilibrium, meaning as long as you stand on this line, the gravity is cancelling out. So y equal negative one half. What happens if I go above? If I move above this equilibrium, let's say I am going to take, and let me just push this to the right a bit. Okay. If I go above this line, let's say I move up to y equal 0 and let's say y equal 1. If I throw a 0 in there it seems y prime equals a 1. At 0, well let's say that's a slope of 1. So the first problem might be a bit confusing. The next problem hopefully it's going to get better. 1 plus, so 2 plus 1 is 3, y prime equal 3. That's a lot steeper. Right, at y equal 0, 1, right there. So 3, a lot steeper. So I already know how this is working. Meaning, if I pick any point above this line, it seems anywhere I am. So imagine you're running liquid like water or air left to right. If you release any object floating, it's going to fly in that direction. And if I move below, if I run below this line and say, well, let's see what happened if y equals a negative 1 and y equals a negative 2. And no need to really get fractions. Try to get whole numbers. That makes your life a lot easier. A negative 1 right there. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. So this is negative 1 half. This is negative 1. It seems identical to the previous problem. Of course, they're not all the same. And y equal negative 2. 2 times negative 2. Negative 4 plus 1 is a negative 3. 3 a lot steeper. So again, it seems if I am beneath this line, if I jump down or release, again, you could put arrows. You're going to be shooting down to negative infinity again. So it's almost identical to the top problem. Here we're going to say, well, the limit as t approaches infinity of y, it seems to be positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on y sub 0 again. In calculus, you find y sub 0, but you never really figured out how powerful it is in this class you're going to see how that works so that's number four and the beauty of this class the homework is very limited that is if you want to study for a test you could probably do the entire homework for all the sections in about a couple of hours here we're gonna do the same and set this equal to zero so assume this is t and assume this is y well, keep in mind, this is y. y is the solution to this calculus problem. In the next section, 1.2, we're going to solve that by hand. And you'll see what that means. So here, I set it equal to 0. I'm getting equilibrium to be at y equal 0 or y equal 5. So here I have two lines to worry about. y equals 0 is a line matching the x-axis, or the t-axis in this case. There it is. And y equals 5. Let's say that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's 5 right there. You know, we can scale this any way we need. 
as we see fit. Assume that's a five right there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pick a couple of values and let's see how this works. If I am to go above, if I am to go at y equals 6 and see what would happen. So, I'm going to get y prime to be what? Negative 6, right? And 5 minus 6 is negative 1. I'm getting a 6. This is very steep. I could pick more points. No need, but we could do that. Let's say y equals 7. Just to figure out how this works, y prime will be a negative 7 times 5 minus 7, which is a negative 2. That's 14, so we get the idea. This is almost flying off. That it? Yeah, I could lower that a bit more. It seems to be a bit high. One unit down, maybe two units down. That will work. And get rid of those, and here we are. So, this is really steep. So, again, so it seems if I am above, I'm flying off. If I jump off of this equilibrium, Right? That's y equal 5 above. How about between? What if I picked y equal, let's say, uh, y equal, let's say, uh, anywhere between 0 and 5. y prime would be a negative 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. That's a negative 4. So do you see here that this is very steep? Uh, steeper than that. And if I picked y equal, let's say uh, 1. y prime would be a negative 1. 5 minus 1 is a 4. That's also a negative 4. So again, And if I pick my last point, let's say I go for, uh, let's go here. If I wanted to go, so this was between, and then if I go beneath, let's say I go to y equal a negative 1, what would happen? I'll get y prime to be minus a negative 1 is 1, 5 minus 1 is a 4, so that would be a uh, oh no, stop. A negative five plus one is a six. So that's a six. So at negative one versus negative one, six is very steep. I could pick one more just to be certain. I could pick y equal, let's say, a negative two, and see what happened y prime would be minus a negative 2 is a 2. 5 minus a negative 2 is 2 prime of 7. That's 14. So I get the idea. That's an ugly 14. This is a lot steeper. So now, I could tell how this is behaving. If I take, let's pick this color. If I am above and I jump up, I'm going to fly off. Left or right? Now here, if I release, it seems I'm being pushed down and leveling off next to that point. Again, I'm finding the solution. In the next section, I'll find the actual equation. And here, do you see how that's working? If I jump, if I if I jump down below y equal zero, do you see I'm going to be pulled back up? So the behavior here seems to be a bit different than the previous. That is, if I take 
the initial condition to be bigger than 5, then the limit as t approaches infinity of y would be infinity. Infinity, we call it divergent. Don't need to bring back some painful memories from second semester calculus. If I pick the initial point to be between 0 and 5, then the limit as t approaches 0 of y would equal 0. And if I pick the initial point to be less than 0, the limit as t approaches infinity of y would equal 0. This is called a stable solution. That is, if I am above this line or below this line, it seems I'm being attracted on both ends. And if I look at my general solution, free fall, an object in free fall, my equilibrium solution, if I set that equal to 0, solve for v, so that would be mg minus gamma v equals 0. And if I move that over, V will be negative mg divided by negative gamma, which is mg over gamma. All of these values are positive. This is my equilibrium. So if I draw that line, assume it's somewhere here. Right? mg over gamma. Now, if I do my testing, if I pick my y to be, how am I going to test? Well, I'll pick twice that value. That's for sure going to be above it, right? Then my y prime would be g minus gamma over m times. And if I replace this in there, that will be twice mg over gamma. The m's cancel out. The gamma cancel out. I would be left with y prime equal g minus 2g, which is negative g. Get it? Negative g. So that's negative. So I know if I'm above negative 9.8, well, it's coming down very steep. And if I pick y to equal half of mg over gamma, then y prime would be, again, plug that in there g minus one half mg over gamma oops i forgot i forgot the gamma over m gammas cancel out m's cancel out i'll get y prime to equal g minus one half g which is half g so positive about 4.9 so i know if i pick my values if I am above, and if I am below, so I know that if I take the limit as t approaches infinity of uh, my velocity, I will get to be mg over gamma, and guess what that's called? Terminal. And there's the homework. The homework on section 1.1 is on page 8, numbers 1, 3, 7, 9, and number 21. 21 is equivalent to this. They just say, what if you squared V? We'll talk about that tomorrow.